now is the time for the youth brigade to take over uh, there are four talks uh, first talk is by mr paulas rajeshekaran uh, i see here please come uh, mr paulas rajeshekaran is a phd student at uh, cranfield university he is going to talk about uh, futuristic eco friendly propulsion systems in which he will review of uh, different propulsion systems and their different choices uh, during his uh, 15 minutes talk uh, rajshekaran you have 15 minutes rajshekaran on the indian yes rajshekaran sorry you have 15 minutes time yeah. and 5 minutes for discussion and uh, last introduced week. okay yeah let us let see. me try yeah yeah sure Uh, thank you, dear chairman, for introducing me to the people. Good afternoon, everyone uh, present here. And I am Paulus Raja Segeran, as uh, the chairman has said. I am standing in front of you to give a talk about a title called Futuristic Eco-Friendly Propulsion System. And the co-author of the paper is mentioned here, Mr. Vasant Ramaswamy. And it's, uh, the work has been done under the guidance of our course director called Dr. Stephen Ogaji. Before moving to the presentation, I would like to thank the organizing committee of Aero India for the efforts taken to organize the international seminar in a successful manner. I was just told a few minutes uh, ago that this is the first time Aero India has asked uh, or uh, gave a chance to a students to present in front of all this eminent and uh, uh, big scientists all over the world as well as in India. So I'm, I feel myself I'm really lucky and I, I hope uh, all the students who are present here would be motivated and they'll uh, try to uh, present all the papers in the Aero India coming ahead. So moving to the presentation. Uh, a few things I would like to uh, say about this because, you know, Cranfield has sponsored me to send here, so I, it should be, you know, it's le legitimate to tell something about Cranfield before going to the topic. So I'm actually a MSc guy. I have completed my MSc in thermal power, aerospace propulsion option from Cranfield University. And the university, if you see Cranfield, it's formed in, uh, during 1946, uh, and it's a uh, Base, uh, it's, it's the place where the uh, older, uh, it was formerly known as a Royal Air Force Base. So we have our own airports and everything. And Cranfield offers various postgraduate and research doctoral programs. And Cranfield is well known for collaboration with research. Uh, yeah, I think Mr. Blank knows better than me. Uh, so Cranfield has, uh, you know, involved in diff different uh, research programs. Uh, especially we have a Rolls-Royce UTC in performance engineering and other uh, European Union projects as well. So moving to the project. So my presentation OE contents uh, carry of introduction, then the evolution of propulsion system, and some areas uh, of research which is, uh, which is taking place in propulsion system, and few futuristic propulsion concepts, and the concept evaluation in, in the point of view of, of an author. And uh, I would like to derive a small conclusion as well. So going to the introduction, if you see the present scenario of aviation industry, what is happening is a global movement of people. People are traveling in enormous wave number from here to there, you know, all around the globe. And you know, less transportation time, that's the key thing which, uh, which uh, flavors the uh, uh, aviation industry. And need to survive in this global competition. If you see the last decade, especially in company, uh, countries like India, we have several airliners. Due to you know, number of increase in airliners, due to, uh, to survive in this global competition, they have reduced the fares enormously. And altogether, this leads to increase in number of people traveling. And this graph shows you the, sorry, this graph shows you the uh, predicted uh, f uh, aviation growth in near futures. And this increase in number of traveling, people traveling, uh, has caused several uh, issues. Like we already have uh, fuel depletion, fossil fuel depletion. The graph which is here, it, it's a, a graph given by uh, Shell. They predict that you know, uh, by 2015, 2016, the demand is going to be high, tremendously high, and the supply is going to be low. So what is happening is we are uh, having fuel depletion and increase in emission. At the moment, we are around 2-2.3 percentage of emission in globe. But you know, it, it, it itself is too much because uh, we are expecting that the growth is going to increase numerously. And all this global uh, warming and all the stuffs due to these emissions, we are expecting to have a stringent legislations on safety, emission, and noise. So how are we going to tackle these things? 
So there are several objectives created in Europe as well as in US. For example, in Europe, we have ACAR objectives, which stands for Advisory Council for Aeronautics Research in Europe. And uh, again, in US, NASA has uh, framed uh, certain objectives. But if you see, there is some unique things. They have all the, st uh, the parameters which they are looking to have uh, uh, reductions are pretty much the same, the NOx and CO2 and noise. Though the numbers which we are looking around you know, in 2020, 2020, it might be varying high, high and low, but the thing is, uh, they are looking to reduce the same factors. So what is happening overall in aviation industry? We are developing a lot of uh, technology over the years. If you say the, see the past 70 years, there has been enormous technology improvement, especially in the gas turbine field. But unfortunately, what is happening, the growth and demand in aviation is increasing in such a phase that the technology which we are trying to develop is not able to meet or it's not able to cater the needs of the people. So it's, I would say it's the time for the technology uh, to mature its more, so it's a time for a game changer we, which we require. So what sort of game changer we can have? If you see the evolutions of propulsion system over the years, right starting from 1910 to 1950, at the, the right-hand side of the road, it's just a sort of road map, at the right-hand side of the road, you, you find all the actual engines laid on, and at the left-hand side, it's the conceptual engines. So what has happened at the beginning of the uh, aviation industry is, oh, we had all piston engines powered aircraft. But you know, after a certain point, we started thinking, well, now what is there to move forward? So we need speed. So how does this speed can be achieved? Then came two the magical scientists, one from British and another from Sherman, and uh, they found uh, jet engines. And this Whittle engine started the jet engine era. Uh, I, I can say like that, because that's the production engine which came into life. And then from next centuries, what happened is speed and capacity was the required criteria. To meet these things, all these uh, engine OEM companies were trying to design different engines which requires these things. So in later stages, we found fuel and efficient should be more because at this particular point, if you see in 70s to 80s century, we had a fuel uh, uh, increase in fuel prices. And that's the reason you find the open dot are there sticking there. And it started at a very good thing, a very good pace. And still today, we have open dot we, we, we feel that open dot has a good potential. But the trouble is it has inherently very, very big challenges. And later stages, if you see, we, again, we, we wanted to make our engine more fuel efficient, and then cost and noise effective. And finally, if in the uh, recent trends, if in uh, to, to, to 2010, you find the engines are more focused on environmental cost and noise. So that's where we have G9, uh, Gen X and Trend 900, which is powered, which goes to uh, with A380s. So what are the research areas uh, happening in, uh, taking place in terms of propulsion, especially in propulsion? We're trying to increase the propulsion efficiency, improve the thermal efficiency, and you know some research is carried on reducing the weight, as uh, Mr. Blank said yesterday. There are like uh, blisk and bl blink uh, sort of uh, blades which has to be manufactured, and the idea of doing all those things is to re reduce the weight. At the end of the day, that improves your SFC as well. And then uh, there are some uh, research works going on in terms of improving the uh, LOD ratio of the aircraft, and in terms, you know, we can have an engine over the uh, fuselage, which uh, gives the additional benefit of uh, sucking the boundary layer. Uh, and then you have alternate fuels. But in this presentation, I'm just going to concentrate on increasing the propulsion efficiency and the thermal efficiency. So some of the futuristic concepts which I have taken for consideration is gear turbofan, open rotor, turboelectric propulsion system, and pressure gain combustion cycle. So let us see what is gear turbofan. Probably people might be knowing about this better than me, but then the idea was to present all those things to the student who might feel this, it's an interesting talk. So what is uh, gear turbofan? It still acts, uh, remains as a two-spool engine, but it, the only difference is it's the fan is uh, uh, it's connected with the re reduction gear, so the fan can rotate its an optimum speed. So some of the positive benefits of gear turbofan you can see is it reduces the engine size, since the, aircraft, uh, the fan can rotate its an opt optimum speed, and it's efficient and quieter as well. The, uh, and the, it, it gives up uh, possibilities like you can increase the bypass ratio. Yesterday, if, I think I remember, yeah, it was Dr. Balal who said um, PW100, which is a uh, gear turbofan, is going to be a high, highest bypass ratio, having more than 11. So that's the possibility of it and increase in operating pressure ratio as well. But the challenges inherent with the gear turbofan are the gear life and gear reliability because it's going to rotate in the highest speed and you have to step down the speed when, you, it, when it comes to the fan. So it comes again to the reliability of the gear. 
and uh, the weight addition as well as it's a positive and pros and cons inherent with the weight because the gear is going to increase the weight but overall it's going to reduce the size because of the fine is disengaged with the shaft the second thing is open rotor um, Open rotor there are different, uh, two ty different types of configurations, though the fundamental remains the same. One is the puller type and the other one is a suction type, uh, pusher type, sorry. And the benefits uh, with, uh, which comes with the open rotor are no drag from the nozzle, since the fan is uh, not adducted. So there's no drag from the nozzle, and it has an opportunity to increase the rotor diameter where you can increase more thrust. And uh, it is predicted to have, it is suspect to have that open rotor can end up uh, giving something like 25 to 30% better efi efficiency and 20% lower NOx. But we come to know only when this thing comes into certification and comes out of uh, certification norms and other things. But the challenges which is inherent uh, with the open rotor are potentially high noise. Because it's not ducted, you're not uh, uh, sealing any, uh, uh, capturing the uh, noise which is produced by the fan. And weight of the gearbox, again, uh, due to, you know, you have a rotor to be coupled uh, uh, to the engine, so you need to have a gearbox. So that's, again, additional weight when you talk, uh, when you consider about the open rotor. And the biggest challenge is, like, noise as well as how are you going to integrate it with the airframe. Now, this is not the conventional modern turbofan engine. And people, when they see the open rotor, they might feel afraid, oh, what is going to happen if the fan blows out of the engine? So it's sort of, you know, how are you going to integrate the engine with the airframe? And the accessibility and the maintenance issues are also uh, comes within the open rotor. Mm, but it can be trade-off then by the, between the turboprop and the turbofan. For example, the turbofan can be operated at a speed around Mach of 0.8. But the open rotor works as of a turboprop. So it can be, you know, it can uh, be at a max of Mach 0.75. But still, it gives you better fuel efficiency. Uh, at the end of the day, you feel that the, SFC, you know, the open rotor plays a very important role in giving better S uh, SFC. The third one is the turboelectric propulsion system. It's nothing but you have a, a gas generator that has the same simple gas turbine. It is coupled to uh, different fans. These are fans which is uh, driven by electric motor. So the uh, gas turbine is coupled to electric generator. And this generator uh, produces the electric power, which is required to rotate this fan. And this fan, the main problem, the there are several benefits, but the main challenge is inherent with the turboelectric propulsion system is you need to have lightweight electrical components. And when you compare the conventional electric motors, conventional electrical uh, generators, it's huge in size. So the only way to get uh, rid out of this weight uh, issue is you need to have, go for a high temperature or cryogenically cooled electric motors as well as cryogenically cooled super, uh, superconductor generators. So that's the challenge. And this is one of the uh, animation which is done by uh, 